Synaptic transmission is the name of the process whereby neurons communicate with each other. This communication takes place at synapses, which are the junctions between neurons. First, the action potential travels down the length of the axon until it reaches the end of the axon known as the terminal button. At the terminal button, calcium gates open, which allows calcium to enter the neuron. The calcium then binds to vesicles, which are tiny bubble-like structures located at the end of the terminal button, which contain neurotransmitter molecules. Once the calcium has binded to the vesicles, it causes them to move to the edge of the synapse, known as the presynaptic membrane, and then to break open, releasing neurotransmitter into the synaptic space, or synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitter moves into the synapse because of the forces of diffusion. Some of the neurotransmitter binds to the presynaptic cell, acting like a shutoff valve, telling the cell to stop releasing more neurotransmitter. Most of the neurotransmitter crosses the synaptic space and binds to receptors on the postsynaptic cell, thereby transmitting a message from the presynaptic to the postsynaptic cell. This is the step that allows the transmitting of messages from one neuron to the next. The binding of neurotransmitter to the postsynaptic receptors is often referred to as the lock and key mechanism because it depends on the shape and structure of both the neurotransmitter and the receptor. The receptor is viewed as the lock, the neurotransmitter as the key, and the complementary shapes of both the neurotransmitter and receptor, as well as complementary electrical charges, allow the two to join together like a hand fitting into a glove or a key fitting into a lock. The neurotransmitter binding to the receptor causes one of three effects on the postsynaptic cell. First, it can excite the postsynaptic cell, causing the voltage to increase, called an excitatory postsynaptic potential, or an EPSP. Second, it can inhibit the postsynaptic cell, causing the voltage of the postsynaptic cell to decrease in what is called an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, or IPSP. The third effect is to cause changing in the functioning of the postsynaptic cell, referred to as modulation, where it can modulate or modify the excitability of the postsynaptic cell making it more or less sensitive. Once the message has been transmitted between cells, the neurotransmitter must be eliminated or it will continue to have an effect on the postsynaptic neuron. There are two main mechanisms by which the neurotransmitter is removed from the synapse. First, about 70% of the transmitter is reuptaken, which means recycled, brought back into the presynaptic neuron where it can be repackaged in vesicles and used again to transmit a new message. The second way that it is eliminated is known as metabolization, whereby the neurotransmitter is broken down by chemicals present in the synapse that essentially break the key so that it no longer fits in the lock and can no longer transmit the message. And now communication has occurred between two neurons. And this form of communication, combined with action potentials, allows the nervous system to transmit information, which is the fundamental basis for all types of functions, including perception, emotions, thought, movement, and many other functions carried out by the nervous system.